So why would I go through all my old magazines and tear them all up? Well, obviously, to turn them into something useful. Stick around and I'll show you exactly what I mean. What's up gamers? I'm Josh and this is Copper Dragon Games. On this channel, I talk about Dungeons and Dragons. DM tips, product reviews, virtual tabletop resources, and so on. Today we're talking about a project that I actually started a few years ago, but that it took me until this week to get around to finishing. And that was going through all my Dragon magazines and tearing them up. If you're newer to Dungeons & Dragons, then you might not realize that for many, many years, there were actually a few print magazines that were dedicated to Dungeons & Dragons. One was called Dungeon Magazine and focused on adventures. The other one was called Dragon Magazine and focused on well, pretty much everything else. Dragon Magazine was a huge part of my development as a gamer. When I was a broke middle school kid, it was the only RPG content I really could afford. So it was the only thing I ever got, except for what I was getting for Christmas and birthdays. I have very fond memories of poring over every single Dragon magazine that I could get my hands on. Reading them cover to cover and mining them for different ideas that I could bring into one of my campaigns. I also remember the abundance of advertisements in each of those magazines, and the bittersweet fantasies of thinking about how sweet my tabletop would be if I just had enough money to go buy some Dwarven Forge terrain. Sadly, during the transition from 3rd edition to 4th edition, Dragon Magazine moved online, and I stopped keeping up with it. By the time we got to 5th edition, it's pretty much disappeared altogether. But even though I'm focused on 5th edition now, and all of the Dragon Magazine articles are from previous editions, there are still some nuggets of wisdom and, and really good content there. I really do love Dragon Magazine, and I hate to see all that useful information just sitting on a shelf wasting space. And waste space they did. I can think of, off the top of my head, a half dozen or more cool articles about dwarves, for example, that I would just never use because they're scattered among six different issues over a span of ten years worth of magazines. I was never going to take the time to go back and dig through all those articles and find the things I was looking for. And truthfully, the space they were occupying was really becoming a problem. I'm lucky to have a spare bedroom that's full of all my nerdy hobby stuff. But even that space isn't limitless. So I finally decided that the space was more important than the nostalgia. As much as I love Dragon Magazines, those things were going to have to be useful again or they were going to have to go. And that's when I got this great idea. I could tear apart all those magazines and reassemble them in a way that I would actually take them off the shelf and use them again. So I grabbed my handy X-Acto knife and started going through every old Dragon Magazine issue I could find in my man cave. I started cutting out every single article that felt worth saving, whether they were useful or just inspiring for some reason. This took a really long time because I kept catching myself taking breaks to read these old articles that I loved so much in middle school and high school and early college. This process really proved that there was enough there that was worth saving, and reinforced the idea that they should not be lying on a shelf going unused. Not all of my cuts were straight, and there were a couple times that I ran into trouble because the margins were different sizes from page to page, and I would accidentally cut into the page under the one I was cutting, but overall, it was a pretty smooth process. Once I had my stack of cutout articles, I started organizing them based on content. The plan was to have three books of Dragon Magazine articles, organized by topic that I could browse anytime I was looking for inspiration for an adventure hook or a homebrew player option or whatever else I was looking for in that moment. I wanted one volume of character options, like a player's handbook of sorts. I wanted a second volume of DM tips and tricks and campaign related stuff. A pseudo dungeon master's guide if you will. And I wanted a third book full of interesting monsters and locations like a monster manual adventure combo. I quickly realized that I would also need to find room for lots of magic items as I made sure that I pulled every single bazaar of the bazaar article that I found. And I decided to throw those into the second book, since it would be closest to the Dungeon Master's Guide, and that's where most magic items are in the core rule books anyway. Once I had them organized into three stacks, one for each book, I grabbed some three ring binders and some sheet protectors. At this point, I just started putting them all into the binders. In hindsight, it probably would have been a better idea to organize these 
before I put them in the sheet protectors because I ended up having to go back later on and pop the binders open, remove some of the sheets, put them in a different spot, close it. It was kind of a mess. If I'd been a little more organized on the front end, it would have saved me a lot of time at this stage in the process. But the end result was still super sweet because now I have three binders about this size on my shelf instead of the 50 or so issues of Dragon Magazine that used to be taking up an entire, well, a much bigger space than these did. This project took hours and hours of time, but I have a lot more shelf space to show for it, and my Dragon Magazine content is much more likely to actually be used than it has for the last 15 years or so. Now if I'm looking for a cool article about dwarves, to bring that example back, all of those articles are all in the same spot, in one place, in a binder, and now I can go back to one location inside one book and find all of the articles about dwarves that I decided to save from all those Dragon Magazines before. Did it feel a little weird cutting up my old Dragon Magazines? Absolutely. But I like to think that I'm actually honoring them in a way by saving them and putting them in a format that I'll actually use again. They are worth far more than the dust they were collecting on my shelf before today. I appreciate you taking the time to stay till the end and hang out with me today. If you like what you saw, learned something new, or just enjoyed being here, I hope you'll take the time to click the subscribe button below, and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any future content. I'll be back next time to share more gaming tips and tricks. We'll see you then.